Good morning gardening friends. Welcome to my Tea Time Tuesday. We have a dreary warm day here and it's sprinkling a little but I thought I better get this in. I didn't see you last week. The uh, grass uh, is looking pretty right now. Fuzzy burgundy foliage and I used some in flower arrangement for in the house and it looked pretty. Sunflowers are setting their heads. I should probably tie them to the flagpole here in case we get high winds. And the calendula is doing good. I need to get out here daily and deadhead. Now these here I told you I do not pick daily for drying. First of all, I use commercial fertilizer on this area and I don't want to uh, have that in my infused oils. Plus, I don't want to take the flowers off every day because I want color here. The Victoria Salvia from seed, self-seed, is starting to bloom. So it's giving me that blue and purp uh, purple blue and some orange and then the burgundy marigolds in the sun are really blooming nicely these are all reseeds Mexican sunflower is giving me the height with orange and the butterflies love it. Russian sage which I cut down oh the end of June so it blooms shorter is just now starting to get its pretty lavender blue flowers on it. You see that gap in there? So I planted, I transplanted another one. So next year I don't have this gap. Cat mint is looking tidy in there because I cut it back. And the Russian sage will give me the blue I want around here. Still the springtime silver foliage of the basket of gold alyssum is looking okay. It's a filler right now. It starts looking like this, yucky. I tidy it up. I cut it back. Just haven't gotten to it. So this area here, you can see the marigolds aren't blooming as nicely yet because it gets more, a lot more shade in here. Where as we walk the path in full sun, you'll see that they're blooming more dense. And I do deadhead these. I do take the time and walk around and two hand pull. I just pull. I don't snip. I just snap them off. Potentellas are looking good. They are a magnet for the Japanese beetles. Foliage of the corabels I think looks good with the marigolds. And I will cut the flower heads off of the uh, corbels. But look at the blooms on here. This is full sun. PG hydrangea tree is starting to set their flowers. Now last year I gave it, through winter, a lot of uh, yogurt whey. And I think I will do it this next year again because this year the blooms aren't as big, which is okay because then they don't get weighted down. But I think the whey from my yogurt uh, fertilized them nicely. The pots, the bunnies are trimming. They like to eat the sweet potato vine. That's okay. They eat what's going over the edge of the uh, pot. A 
the arch is doing fantastic. And I'll try to explain to you what I'm doing here. You see how bunched up it is up there? The vine sits on the vine and intertwines with the vine. Well, I am bringing it down. When I see that it is curling around something else, I uncurl it and let it hang long so it covers up some of this yuckiness down below. So what I will do is let this twine around the bottom. I don't know if this is making sense to you. So it covers up. See this vine coming down? I'm going to let it keep coming down. And then it won't have bare on the bottom and everything on the top. Orange flowers are so pretty. In the morning, my one room here, I can overlook this trellis and I'm doing yoga or meditating in that room and I can see the hummingbirds on this vine and it's very mm, tranquil for me to see that. Calendula needs to be picked today, but it hasn't dried out and I don't want to pick wet flowers. So it might have to wait till tomorrow. I pick about every other day the calendula flowers for drying. Raspberries are setting their new fruit for later bloom, for later berries. I let some of the lettuce go to seed and some of the dill go to seed and let it drop here. Cucumbers are coming nicely. That's just one or two plants in there. The bunnies ate the rest or mice going up over the trellis. More than enough, but I have a few more plants that I can put in there. I dropped seed, dill seed, in there. We'll see if it amounts to anything. Beets, something's eating them in there. So I'm going to be end up buying beets at the farmer's market. Amaranth. Just trim back some of the borage. I let some of it come up here and there. Malabar spinach. I took some of the leaves off for bacon, lettuce, and tomato yesterday. Green onions, pull as needed. Holy basil, half of it I harvested and drying. The other half will get picked as soon as it dries out, day or so. Nasturtiums, I had them caged with a chicken wire and decided to take it off, so it flopped. But it'll come. You see the small coming from the, the back? It'll fill in. Just picked some flowers and leaves for lunch today for in my salad. Opened up the hoop house today quickly before the white butterflies were out so I could harvest some of my greens. And I'm sorry, I haven't. Maybe I'll have Dave take a, a picture of me in there so you can see how it's doing. It's doing fine. Gives me enough for greens. Broccoli, no broccoli heads though. Another Malabar spinach I'm letting climb up here. Calendula and verbena. My obstacle course here so the deer stay away. And the raccoons. So far, so good. So, harvesting some tomatoes. But like I said, I do have uh, the blight on those tomatoes. I take leaves off maybe every couple days. Herbs, wonderful herbs. Picking parsley for my bone broth every morning. I steam them in my bone broth. Along with kale and... Swiss chard and lamb's quarters and dandelion greens. 
basil, basil, sage, peppermint, spearmint. Lots of peppers in there. That's my, if you watch my other videos, that's my obstacle course for my peppers. But they are setting more flowers since the deer trimmed them for me. So hopefully I have some nice peppers before the end of uh, the growing season. We had our, um, probably our second bacon, lettuce, and tomato the other day. Okay. And then yucky blight. I didn't get to it in the last couple days. So that's it over here, gardening friends. Carrots are coming good. Picked a few. But the branches are working for me right now. Some tomatoes in the garden. Jewelweed. This is all jewelweed. It'll have orange flowers on it. Lobelia, a uh, great blue lobelia. This is a perennial here in Wisconsin, zone five. It can spread all at once in here. Fill in around the daylilies, because the daylilies are almost done. I have one, one or two more blooms on here. And then another arch of the scarlet runner bean. That orange is so pretty. No beans yet that I can see, but they could be hiding in there. I don't grow it for the beans as much as uh, for uh, the pretty flowers. Now there's supposed to be a blue morning glory on here too, heavenly blue. And I can't tell at a quick glance, which is which. But I'm letting the vines come down so it hides the yucky foliage on the bottom. Can you see how long this is getting? This is, oh. So I'm letting it, I'll, I'll probably whip it up there too, a little bit. Okay, enough of that, right? Let's see what's blooming. <gasps> Celandine poppy, still blooming. This is from spring. Now, this is a native, and yes, it goes crazy, but look how it fills in this area. Then I don't see the weeds so much. And it looks pretty with the blue, great blue lobelia. Now, I'm going to take some of this seed, which... It recedes heavily, and I'm going to put it back there by the wood pile and not add any more mulch on top of the, after I cast the seed, I'm not going to add more mulch because it needs light to germinate. So then hopefully this plant here, can you see, back up, will hide the wood pile. Celadine poppy. You want to fill in an area that'll bloom in the shade. But right now it's great blue lobelia that's starting to bloom and will bloom probably for several weeks. It blooms from the um, top down. Hibiscus. This is the common white one, grown from seed. Has a pink center, I think. Pretty. So great blue lobelia will bloom in sun or shade, moist or dry. It's native, and that means it's aggressive. I shall start um, leaving the rose campy and go to seed. I deadhead that one. And I'm letting, of course, the Queen Anne's Lace go to seed too. Now that needs light to germinate also. So 
I am not going to, maybe I'll cast the seed. I'll save seed and cast it over the mulch and see what that does next spring. The grasses are starting to look pretty. Uh, a lot of my miscanthus have died, but the zebra, the um, little zebra, has stayed and has multiplied. We dig some of that out every year, little zebra. Probably gets about four or five feet. So it's hardy in zone four or five. Anemone, late summer, early autumn, that light pink. I think it was called Charlotte or something. Whoops, sorry for the out of focus here. And then Joe Pie. That's gateway. Pretty burgundy stems, dark stems, and then the mauve colored flowers. And white flax reblooming back there. And there is a white balloon flower with it. Black-eyed Susans are blooming. That's the um, cup plant. The deer decided they liked it this year. A late-blooming allium. Kind of a lilac pink color. That's the last of the alliums to bloom. Goldenrod. That one is uh, fireworks. And it's a runner, you guys, but oh, very pretty in the garden. Very, very pretty. Maybe I'm going to welcome runners in my garden now that I'm letting it go more natural. So pretty. All those little black berries up the stem, those will make new plants. Few day lilies blooming yet. Can you see the alliums I sprayed about a month ago? Now the rain has beat them down in the wind, but they look pretty for a while. Blue or whatever color you plan on spray painting them. how the bees like the coneflower. Another daylily, a lighter yellow and fragrant. Now look at this grass here. Can you see the green plume on it? Oh boy, do I have that all over. But I pick it for flower arrangements. It does look pretty in flower arrangements. I did have a penstemon in here, but I, and it, I thought it was more burgundy in zone five, but it looked in, I dug it all, part of it, but the whole thing died then. So I wonder if that is part of the mom plant. Little bit of tick seed blooming yet. Every year I take out a little bit more of that too. It's aggressive. A weed, but this pretty pink 
Doesn't it look good with the uh, uh, perilla, the burgundy perilla? Now, if the sun was out, the flowers would be open more, but it is a, a, a light pink. Now, this area without this fleabane, which is a weed, and this pink whatever, this area would be just perilla and not looking that pretty. So I'm leaving some of these weeds go to flower to see what I like. After all, if you look at the roadside now, at least in Wisconsin, we have uh, the cornflower, that blue flower blooming, and uh, what else, the Queen Anne's lace. It looks so pretty on the roadside. Do you agree? You just don't want it in your gardens, right? My breakfast there, lamb's quarters. Part of my breakfast. This is going to be white. Sweet autumn. Vine, clematis. Pygmy Barberry is giving me some color in this very green area here. The blue lobelia and some blue spider wart still blooming. Now if I was the old lark, I would have probably cut down all that spider wart and I wouldn't have a flower blooming there. Sure, waiting to see how many monarchs I have because I sure have a lot of milkweed. Diablo nine bark blooming in part shade or not blooming, growing in part shade. That was cut down to the ground. So it'll be neat to see how it does grows. Now that Joe Pie back there was trimmed by the deer, so it's blooming shorter. It's only about five foot. Now this lily here, this oriental lily, I cut most of them and brought them in to the house for a flower arrangement. And I put in the arrangement that fuzzy burgundy grass in the front around that planter. Oh, it looks so pretty with it. And then some of the uh, uh, hosta flowers. And then a couple of the hosta leaves. And it really, really pretty. Dave goes, oh my gosh, did you buy a flower arrangement? But the grasses pick up the burgundy in that lily. Branched coneflower. I spread a lot of that seed in here. Not a whole lot. Back there I did, and it just didn't I covered up with grass clippings, so we'll do it again. Another hibiscus. I told you how I cut back some of the flax in June so it blooms later. That's exactly what it's doing. We'll end up in the shade. Now, you see how that joe pie is starting to set seed. Before it gets all fluffy and seedy, I, I will cut that head off. And I have thrown hundreds in the bog area. Look at how nature makes that combination. Without Lark getting OC about it.
when you can walk around your garden and get behind and lower, you can see all the detail of stems and leaves. Ooh, I think that's a merganser. Could be wrong, duck. This year we've had steady rain. Some years the ferns dry up and go dormant, but this year we've had enough steady rain that they still look quite pretty. Jewelweed should start to be blooming soon. The hummingbirds love it. It's a tubular orange flower. Let's see if I can find one here. Let's see here. Can you see here? Like that. They like to go down in there. Flax and goldenrod right, right about now. The fragrance of the flax is nice. Along with my deer, my triplets, and my twins, we also have a turkey family and a raccoon family. Great day. But I still get out here every day. Here's some tansy that's getting ready to bloom. I'll show you in a while, probably in a week or so. Gets a pretty yellow flower on it. Tansy. It's an herb. I don't use it for anything. Flower arranging. Firecracker loose strife. Can you see that flower in my hand? That's the flower it gets. It had real burgundy foliage in the spring. Now it's green, but it gets a yellow flower. There was a time that I cut all those stems off the daylilies, so it looked pretty. My pumpkins have come out of the pumpkin patch. There's the pumpkin patch over there. See my pumpkin patch? And they're going crazy. And there is a big pumpkin in there. I don't know if you can see it in there. We'll have surprises, I think, come fall because there's a lot of pumpkins in here. They've been growing good and getting a uh, pollinated good too. And I think it has something to do with all the flowers I have here. So take care and I will see you all my gardening friends. Thanks for tuning in this week. Bye-bye.